Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a brand new 2022 Aprilia RSV4 Factory 1100. Bone stock, of course. The customer here has, of course, fitted this with some slicks. It's going to be strictly a track bike after we're done here with this. He even taped this on to kind of move him back in the seat a little bit so we can track this thing a little bit. So I'll be today on some full slicks so I gotta warm these things up pretty good before we uh, start hitting anything hard I do have a bone stock exhaust here as well so I'm going to uh, show you guys the difference between the stock flash and our flash now of course we haven't even done the 21 RSV4 yet so this is the first one we've been testing prototype stuff on so you'll be kind of uh, going through this with me for the first time I'll show you guys the turn signals here nothing and you can see it turns signals on right there there's nothing going on though so when we flash it we're gonna have this come on it'll be the turn signal from now on that's also one of the benefits so let's kind of just go through this and start her up and get her going well, I gotta get some gas here but let's get a ride over to the gas station all right so first impressions here of the RSV4 Factory 1100, which got a much needed facelift. I mean, this bike and the old, let's say like the 2019, 2020 Factory 1100, which I love the way the bike felt. I love the way it sounded. Um, nothing really quite sounds like an Aprilia. And I love that sound, I mean, honestly. And um, it just, need, it, I mean, the motor is pretty, pretty dated. The, the whole bike was kind of dated, I mean, the screen was dated, the TFT was so small, um, the headlights were still halogen. Um, I mean, for an Italian bike that cost as much as it did, it just kind of felt very old. So I'm really glad they came out with this update because I really do like the Aprilia platform in general. So you guys can get a first view of this with me here. I've got all the trash control stuff off basically i mean i think the track control is at like three right now for basics just because i have slicks on wheelie control is completely off and i've kind of just muted a bunch of the other settings on this so let's see what kind of pickup we get here off the light okay that's that was everything in first gear i was full throttle First gear. Look at that. I took it to the limiter. It's not lifting the tire off the ground. Look at this. Okay, first and second gear right there. So the power is not really feeling, um, it doesn't feel like it has a whole lot of power. Let's put it that way. It feels like it's kind of dull quite a bit. So let's get some gas in this thing. Warm these tires up a little bit, and then um, let's do kind of riding impressions we can get. We're just getting finished getting gas here. You know you're in California when you're paying 25 bucks for almost four gallons. I wanted to show you guys kind of what the stock exhaust note here was while I was stopped. Oops, might as well key it on. So again, this is a stock exhaust valve is closed. It'll be open with the flash. Just wanted to show you guys. You see right here not moving but when I really rev it up you can kind of see the valve moving so there you go there's a stock clip right there and we'll do an aftermarket clip as well that's everything by the way that's all the gas so it's really not impressive especially for an 1100 cc bike Engine braking feels good. Throttle on is a little bit jerky. I'll see if I can test that a little bit right now. Take off here and see how the regular casual riding goes. That's really jerky one to two, jerky two to three. Oh, there we go, three to four. Yeah, it's pretty jerky down low. Definitely likes to be higher in the RPM. It's a nice, like, even, I would say, pull. Um, 
when it comes to the top end, it definitely starts falling over, uh, falling flat. So the quick shifter is a little bit laggy. Nothing crazy though. Kind of what I expect from stock tuning and everything. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get this thing uh, up in the hill here and see how fast we can get it. All right, and here we go. See how fast she goes. This is 100% throttle. And we've got a weird hazard lights that pop on when you brake hard. That's all first gear, everything. Well, the road's kind of nice, fresh, and repaved. So on and off the throttle here. Yeah, it's nice and smooth. No issues. I'm not gonna try and take this too hard with a cold slick. Oh, the front tire started to dance a little bit there, which is surprising. All right, let's see the passing speed, first gear. hard there we go see the flashers come on and it's a warning to other drivers that I'm braking hard and they should be alerted obviously um, a lot of you will want that off and I'll show you exactly how to turn that off here in a little bit so now we're gonna take this thing and do a quick little 60 through 130 see what she does there and just for a little bonus for you guys this customer wants a dyno so we're gonna take this thing I'm gonna ride it to the dyno and we're gonna see exactly what quantifiable gains on the dyno, same strap, same day, same everything. We're going to go stock versus tuned. And we'll see exactly which one comes up on top and if our tuning makes power, how much more power does it make, right? Now the dyno should be a very good judge of how much we're gaining. Um, I will preface this with, if you guys put it, your bike on a dyno, and I've seen this many times, and I've seen people don't not do a stock baseline, which is bad off the first rip. You should always do a stock baseline first to see where you're see where you're at. After you do the stock baseline, then you flash the bike, and then you do the after baseline. You do it all the same day on the same dyno, same strap, same everything, tire pressures, everything. That that way, it's less manipulated as possible. That's a true way to dyno your stuff. You want to see the before, and let's say you do a this bike, for example, and let's say stock, it makes 140, which I think it'll make more than that stock, but let's just say it does. Um, and then tuned, it makes 160. So some people look at the final number and go, oh man, it only made 160, like how sad is that? That's that's real sad, when in reality, that's it's not sad. It's, it's actually making 20 wheel over the stock baseline, which is what you need to pay attention to, because not every dyno is the same. Meaning not every dyno is going to read 200 wheel horsepower for for a tune on one dyno and it does on another dyno. They may read completely differently, but one thing that you really should look at is the gain. The actual gain from baseline to tuned. That's the important thing to look at. Not just the final number, because in the end a dyno is a tuning tool. It's not the end all be all. Nobody races dyno sheets, you know, it doesn't work like that. So you may read super low on one dyno, super high in another dyno, whatever. Let's just see what it does on the draggy, 60 through 130. That gives us our actual gains through GPS data. Um, and then we'll see it on the actual dyno itself. Now let's get this 60 through 130 done. 
Okay, we got our draggy ready here. And we are ready to do the 60 through 130, which is marked off here. And let's do it. So this is interesting. Bike is stock. I'm waiting to pull on the road here. It went to 241 in the temperature. You can see it's 235, 234 cooling right now. And the bike just shut off. This is bone stock, by the way. So 241, just idling for like, I would say five minutes, the bike has just shut off. Ambient temperature right now is probably about 75. So just wanna let everyone know that one. So I'm gonna be sitting here for a little bit while this thing cools down. All right, 60 through 130, 2022 Aprilia RSV4. Now the 60 through 130 is done. We're gonna go back home here and flash this thing with our tuning and uh, see exactly what the benefits are and see how much faster it is through 6130 and get it on the dyno as well and see what the quantifiable gains are there. Just to recap here, the bike for an 1100 feels extremely lazy. Um, feels like there's a lot of throttle restrictions and a lot of power being held back on this motorcycle. You guys saw it stall at 241 just idling. Um, the bike automatically shut off and I had to wait for a while and then restart it. Everything's fine now. No, there doesn't seem to be any residual issues. It's just that's an issue with this bike and I've heard that from more than one person. So um, that's an issue. The throttle seems lazy. Um, we don't have turn signals on the headlights. The uh, exhaust valve flappers are closed and they open and they close and they open so that's a little annoying for, as far as sound goes the quick shifter is a little bit dull and lazy in my opinion a little too jerky as well so there's a there's a, quite a few things that we can improve upon here so i mean overall i don't like that the bike does this stock but it makes me happy because it's something we can find improvements upon and improve upon it because if the bike was perfect right off the bat be really hard to make a tuning for this thing so get this thing back here and uh, we'll flash in our BT Moto stage one into the Aprilia and uh, I'll be back with you guys see you then all right guys so I'm back here with the now flashed 2022 Aprilia RSV4 and of course I've been testing on it so uh, I'll show you guys step by step exactly what's been changed but just sitting here um, we have a lower fan temp automatically, so 194 now the fans temp, uh, the fans come on, and we have a richer idle, which means the bike's not going to be heating up as much to the point where it's going to shut off anymore. So that's always a positive. Another one is the integrated turn signals in the headlights. So make a left turn. There it is blinking. Very cool. We'll make a right turn. There it is blinking. Yep, works perfectly. And it's fast blinking because the customer does not have a right and left turn signal on the back. If he did, it wouldn't be this fast blinking. All right, let's get her started. And you can see here, I still have the uh, suspension alert here. I'm going to show you guys later how to fix that. And I have a little bit of a confession here, guys. Uh, I did a whole ride review video, and it was cool. And I have to do another one because my microphone took... Uh, decided to peace out on me so there was no microphone for the entire time it was literally just going off my GoPro microphone which just sounds like a bunch of wind um, in a microphone so it's not you can't really hear any words whatsoever so I'm gonna go back out here which I'm not complaining about because it's an amazing bike to ride um, and show you guys exactly what we changed These slicks are a little bit fun. <laughs> you get wild on them. But yeah, it, it picks a tire up now, like nothing now. Okay. Yeah, there we go. And just so you guys know, I don't think I showed you guys. Um, to get that hard braking alert off, let me get this off here. Vehicle. And you go down to emergency braking. Toggle it on or off. I have it off now. So that means when you hit the brakes hard, the hazards won't come on. 
I understand what a, why Aprilia did that. Um, really just a basic, hey, if I'm braking super hard, it's grabbing people's attention, letting them know like, hey, you should be alerted to my braking. I understand it, but to me, and I'm sure to a lot of the people, it's very annoying because it just brings an unwanted attention to yourself as well. If you're doing something not really legal. Um, yeah, we got power now. So we definitely um, definitely have a lot more power than we did before. Before we were dealing with uh, first gear, I was slapping the throttle around it, it would not come up for the life of it. it. It was the end of the story, it just was like, okay, there's no power here, we're not gonna let you pick it up. And I've got the same exact um, configuration I did before. You can see here, the wheelie control's off as it was before, everything's minimized as much as I can. I, only turn the traction control on a little bit because I don't want to see the warning light number one because you've turned it off, the warning light's there. And I have a full slick on the bike, so just being on the street with the full slick makes me a little bit leery, especially with, you know, the elements and debris you find on the street itself. So I wanted a, some intervention there, but normally I just turn that off as well. So I've been on and off here at red lights um, for a little bit of, a few miles now. And the temperature just goes a little bit above 200. Um, it kind of settles there if the bike's warm. If you're just cruising around, it won't even hit that. And I'm in about, I'd say high 70s right now here. High 70s. So, um, yeah, it's working pretty well. And just cruising the bike feels very manageable. Um, the downshifting here. Not crazy, not bucking you around. It's great. Um, there's no issues at all with the downshifting. No issues at all with the upshifting. Um, I'm not noticing that the the uh, downshifting is getting, or I'm sorry, the actual shifting up when you're at low speed. When I was complaining about it being jerky before. It still feels the same kind of jerkiness, but it does feel a little bit quicker up top as far as the kill times go. So here, see it's a little bit jerky still. I'd like that to be a little bit smoothed out. So another thing I did notice um, on the stock configuration, I didn't mention this, but when it got a little bit hotter, the bike would start like knocking or pinging like right off the line basically after that i didn't hear anything but it was audible right off the line and with the flash i'm not hearing that anymore uh i'm not feeling it so oh i mean i shouldn't feel it but i'm not hearing it at all it just kind of feels like a nice even pull rather than just having that weird pinging noise so let's see what it does up the hill As you guys saw, um, over 170 miles per hour, which is much faster than stock. Pretty awesome, felt great, felt nice and even. That power is amazing. The kill times are great up top. Um, I have no issues with this bike as a whole on the track for sure. I mean, like I said, the throttle is easy transition on and off while even in a turn. Um, and even the blips at higher speeds. Here, I'll show you guys. Try to get some speed here so I get a high, RPM auto blip. I'll take my hands off of this thing. So here you go. Absolutely no upside and balance. Bike is bike is amazing, man. And it's got power for days now. This is how an 1100 should feel from the factory. So let's kind of go over the bullet points here before I show the 60 through 130 here of uh, what we did. So. Basically what we've got here is turn signal integration into the headlights, which is always uh, a big item with people. 
Um, you don't even have to purchase anything else, just a flash. And as soon as you flash it, it works. That's how easy that is. Um, we got the better idle now. Um, idle stays at low 200s, and that's when it's even hot because the fans now turn on at 194. And we have a richer idle, which means it's not gonna get to that 240 shut off like what happened uh, yesterday. We have more power. Um, I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if it's power just from the de restriction, but man, you you guys saw I couldn't get it up in first gear at all. I mean, there was no nothing doing there. As soon as we flash it, get all the restrictions off of it. Now all of a sudden, it's pulling the wheels sky high. And of course, the 1100 isn't. Uh, an engine we don't know about. We've been working on it since, you know, the in, the introduction of the 1100 factory, which is the same engine that's in this motorcycle. So we know the fueling. We had these bikes in the dyno. There's no surprises here. So that's how we know it to do this so well. So now I guess the only thing we got to do here is do our actual 60 through 130 testing. All right, and we are ready for our 60 through 130 testing. Let me just double check here. Yep, 60 through 130 is marked off. Let's go. Sixty through 130, 2022 Aprilia RSV4. Let's go. As you guys saw from the 60 through 130 testing, the bike has definitely improved about a half a second faster. So um, we have quantifiable gains here. And on top of that, I'm going to be taking this bike to the dyno tomorrow. I'll be riding it right up there, 91 pump gas. We're dealing with California. So we'll see what the actual power does between baseline stock, and then I'll flash it right there on the dyno. Same day, same strap, same everything. And then um, put our flash into it and see what the other results come out. And this is, of course, on the worst gas in America, California, 91. <laughs> I optimally you'd want 93 octane, like if you're on the East Coast or even Arizona has it. But California, we just got 91 here. And it's the most expensive. So, I'll see you guys when I'm starting to ride to the dyno. And I'll do a little bit of vlogging from there too, so you guys see the actual process on what we're gonna do at dyno. We'll be going to, uh, Cha Cha Cha's over in Riverside. So it's about um, 40 minutes for me. So I'll see you guys then. All right, guys, I'm back here. Just the gas station right now, filling up so we can go to the dyno. We're heading to Riverside at Cha 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 Motorsports. So it's about, I don't know, about an hour for me here. So um, let's just go for a little ride, I guess. This should be fun. to Cha 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 Motorsports. Let's get it on the dyno.
Sorry, I'm flashing the file back right now. And you can see here, we got pretty good data. And we got a total of 197 right there out of the stock file with a higher RPM limiter, a lot cleaner AFR. And you can see this is a stock AFR, and I think this has something to do with the exhaust valve. It's not really the sniffer's fault. The exhaust valve, I think, shuts at a higher RPM, and it makes it really messes up that reader badly there. You can see we even cleaned up um, the mid-range here. And I believe this has something to do with the exhaust itself because it's a stock exhaust. So you can see the red line here is our modded file. And you can see it pull over stock over 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 the whole time and it's nice smoother in the transition there where you can see stock dipped way low ours kept carrying over and over and over that so this is stock right here and you can see big difference huge power difference it's impressive so we're gonna flash this thing back to stock now or sorry back to um another file do some more testing and then uh that's it all right, we're just taking off from a uh, cha-cha-cha here in Riverside. And you guys saw it, 15 wheel horsepower increase from just a flash. We did the original, the uh, stock flash, ran it on the dyno. Then did our flash and ran it, 15 wheel horsepower peak, but it made power everywhere, including this nasty little dip we had. So pretty impressive. They were all impressed here with uh, the flashing. I was impressed with it. I mean that's those are some those are big numbers especially on this dyno this dyno is a little bit of a heartbreaker so i think that's going to do it for this bike i'm just going to take her home now and uh play with her a little more get her back to the customer and then get you guys a finished flash all right really quickly i wanted to give you guys an update when it comes to this error here for the scu this is the factory um, 1100 here that has the active uh, electronic suspension. And that's the error it seems to be having here. Um, I can delete this or remove the error by going to the dealer and using their pads or diagnostic tool for a reset. Now, of course, that's not ideal for anyone, but I also did flash this bike, I would say about 15 to 20 times before that error appeared. And the dealer told me it could be anything from low battery to electrical issues and the customer that owns this bike actually did have electrical issues with it um, before he even brought it to me. So it's very possible it could be one of those things, but uh, it's definitely not the flash because it would have happened the first time I flashed it, not the 20th time I flashed it. I can still go through all the modes here. I can still make any changes I want. Um, no issues there. It's really just this error that needs to go away. So. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update on that and uh, that'll be it. See you guys in the next bike.